Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel and another card making video tutorial. Today I have a set of six oversized fruit stenciling cards featuring brand new products from the Waffle Flower August 2023 release. So this is a super fun and easy way to create some amazing cards very quickly and easily. I had started out thinking I was only going to make about two or three cards and I had so much fun figuring out different color combinations and creating these oversized designs that I am going to go ahead and share all six. Now something I did instead of stenciling on white is stenciling on craft. It is a look that is going to be a little bit different, but I absolutely love it. I've just really been into white lately. Now I wanna talk about this first card. I am making obviously an orange first with the oversized fruit stencils. They are the base of everything here, but I picked the wrong color. I didn't realize it. I, I was stenciling and thinking, huh, that doesn't look quite right um, because I had the, I think it's the fossilized amber. And that is not the color that uh, I, I had wanted. I thought I had picked right persimmon. And so I am going to fix it without starting over. This is uh, carved pumpkin is the orange color I'm using for the inside of my orange. Now, I don't want that craft color left. So after I stencil the outer edge, I like going back over and adding more color. And I'm not gonna worry about blending out too much of the orange slices themselves. I can go over it again if I need to, but it's really evident now that I used the wrong color of ink. Oops. And so I'm just going to put my stencil back. Now I am stenciling on the grid mats from Waffle Flower. That's how I'm holding my stencil in place and my cardstock, nothing is shifting. It is absolutely amazing. Oh, right, persimmon, way better, everybody. That looks way, way better. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the rest. There is only one of the fruits that I'm going to make here today that's I'm going to use the coordinating oversized fruit dies, and that's the strawberry. Uh, kind of need to because there isn't a stencil for the top of the strawberry, um, but there is a die. You can also use the oversized fruit dies to make other kinds of fruit images if you want to. So now we're gonna make the watermelon. I think the watermelon's my favorite, but it's hard to pick. I really had so much fun with all of these. I'm using Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn to do the watermelon rind. And we're simply going to add our color. I, I added both here. I will pull a little more Twisted Citron out. You'll see that here in a minute. Now there isn't a circle die for the center of the watermelon. So this is where your ink blending skills are going to come in and I promise it's super easy. In fact, look how sticky that grid mat is. I have to use something to help me <laughs> lift up uh, th the paper. I've got some candied apple distress oxide ink and I'm going to start filling in this section before we add the seeds. And I am taking my ink almost up to the inked line, but not quite over it. Now, why did I choose Distress Oxide over other inks that I could have picked for this project? Because I am inking, especially because I am inking on a color cardstock, Craft. Here's that little bit of green inking, pulling that color a little bit into the red, by the way. I chose to use these because they have pigment ink in them. And the color sits on top of the cardstock better where it doesn't absorb in and fade out. So the colors you see here are the colors you're going to be left with in the end. And that is what I was looking for. And this would be no matter what color you choose to ink your designs on. So let's say you wanted to ink on a pale blue cardstock, a pale pink cardstock, something to that effect. The color is still gonna be beautiful and vibrant like it is on the craft. Oh, I love it so much. That was black set for the watermelon seeds, of course. And now I'm gonna make my strawberry. 
I'm simply going to ink up the entire panel or you know most of the panel leaving about an inch up at the top maybe three quarters of an inch with the candied apple ink I will blend in a tiny bit of lumberjack plaid for just an additional shading and I faded it out down near the bottom so it's not quite as intense and then we are going to take the all over seed stencil and we're going to add seeds to this. There's also seed dyes, which is super fun. So now we're going to go all over. I really should have probably thought about this. Um, this is an error, but I it didn't bother me enough to fix. I say it's an error. Maybe it was a crafty decision. I wish I would have stamped my sentiment first and then not inked some of the seeds over where the sentiment is. However, it's okay. Uh, you'll see that here in a little bit and why I say that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Now, if I had chosen to stamp and die cut my greeting, that probably would have worked better. Okay, next up, which fruit should we do next? I believe I'm going to do the apple and then we're going to do the lemon and the lime and I did it in that order I wanted to try the apple slice um, the apple slice is probably the one that has like the least amount of color changes and I'll tell you why I chose to do it there's a sentiment in the punny fruit sentiments that's you're the apple of my eye so I needed the fruit the apple fruit slice right absolutely lumberjack plaid for the outer ring of my apple and then we're going to use antique linen and ground espresso this time we're going to use ground espresso for the seeds but I'm going to use the antique linen for the inside of my apple and it does change believe it or not it does lighten the color of the craft just a little bit you can see the color here I think it's not a huge change but I, I think it's enough. And then I did lemon and lime last because they're pretty much, well, they are stenciled exactly the same except for color choices. And I didn't want to clean my stencils in between changing colors. <laughs> so that was how we came about that. After I had stenciled the first couple of cards and I realized, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I want to make a whole bunch. I looked at the punny sentiments, fruit sentiments stamp set, also part of this release, and I picked the sentiments I wanted to use. And knowing which sentiments I wanted to use helped lead me towards which cards or which fruit I wanted to stencil. I had kind of run out of time or I probably would have done the kiwi as well because I liked the kiwi sentiment a lot. There's a lot of other great sentiments uh, that work with the other products in this release. There's more fruit themed products than what I'm showing here. I'm focusing on the oversized stencils in this video, um, but I wanted to make mention of that. I'm using squeezed lemonade and mustard seed here. I will say the lemon stenciling, I had to kind of go over it again. I should have done this outer ring in mustard seed done a layer of squeezed lemonade just in the center without a stencil and then gone over and done the actual fruit stencil that I did in squeezed lemonade in mustard seed. Um, so I did want to make mention of that because I kind of, it, it's not a mistake necessarily. It just is a little extra work because that's what I end up doing anyway. I don't like the craft color as the base of my fruit for any of them. That's why I've done this with all of the fruit anyway. So I'm, I'm applying the squeezed lemonade, but you're losing all the definition of the fruit slice. And I leave that in because I want to show how easy it is to correct those things when you are designing. Okay, so now we've got mustard seed. And I'm, I applied only a little bit, trying to decide, you know, did I, did I apply enough ink or not? I did not. So let's go ahead and add more. 
I've lost the seeds completely and that's okay. I think they're gonna look better in a nice lighter brown ink. So it was a lot of flipping back and forth, but in the end, I absolutely love how this card turned out. And I didn't re-ink my brown ink blending tool. I just used whatever was left on there and I used a pretty light hand. So cute. Okay, let's do a lime and then let's pull it all together with our sentiments and embellishments. Now these are a super simple design, meaning it's a lot of, of stenciling and stencil layering and ink blending, but it's very easy to achieve. And to me, that is a great project if you are limited on time, yet you want to come away with a beautiful set of cards. Um, because these are fantastic and work for lots of occasions. There's, you know, anything from birthdays to kind of more of a thank you, friendship, all kinds of things. Um, really cute and a lot of different ways to use them. If you're not a fan of punny sentiments, you can leave that part off altogether and just use the larger sentiments that coordinate back. I love the fonts. I kind of smartened up, did that light color first, then went back with my detail stencil, and then again, a little bit of brown for the seeds. Try to use a pretty light hand. And we are left with a wonderful lime slice. Okay, we are going to take a look at all of the backgrounds. This was a fun project. If you just have a little time in an evening, stencil up some backgrounds and then you can work on adding detail later. I've got my splatter box and a little water from a distress sprayer and I am just going to distress my backgrounds a little bit. I knew these cards were going to be fairly simple and I wondered what kind of fun ways could I, you know, dress them up a little bit and I decided to go with the old reliable water over distress ink technique. Never lets you down, always awesome and I am going to splatter it, dab it up. It was the, for some reason, I didn't think on the orange it showed up all that great, um, but that's okay. I added a little bit more. I There's a few faded areas. I was actually a little surprised that it didn't show up quite as much on this. There it's a little bit heavier. I like to dab it dry, so I don't want, really want my stenciling to run, but I do want some of those oxidized splatters. It also didn't show up very well on the apple. I guess I should mention that too. It really showed up great on the red. I feel like it showed up really good on the lime and really not on the lemon either for that matter. So maybe it's just the lighter colors. So after I have splattered all of my backgrounds, we're gonna let those dry and we are going to stamp some sentiments. And what I did was I, as I mentioned a minute ago, took the sentiments from my Punny Sentiment stamp set and I looked at that and it's called Fruity Pun. And I took Fruit Sentiments and I paired up the Fruit Sentiments with a Fruity Pun and paired them with each background. So off camera, kind of over to the side, I have each background laid out with the sentiments I'm going to use. And I did reuse, I think, Hey Sweetie, a couple of times uh, from our fruit sentiments. And then I'm stamping with black ink in the center of each of these backgrounds. It looks so awesome. Now this sentiment stamp set, the Fruity Sentiments, does have a coordinating die. So if you would prefer to stamp on another piece of paper and die cut, you definitely could do that. Um, I did not because I didn't want to lose the detail of the stenciling uh, for this particular design. I think depending on how you stencil, and I know I use the stencil very much kind of as they come, quote unquote. Uh, you could position the lime, watermelon, lemon, orange, whatever, off to the side, 
off to the top, off to the bottom, and have a little bit different look. And then, and then you might want to stamp and die cut on a separate piece of paper. So I just wanted to make mention of that, that there is a coordinating die. I love when there's coordinating dies for sentiments. You never know, you know, when you think that might look better. And truth be told, I'm considering changing that for the strawberry. Um, I thought sleeping on it and thinking about it might change my opinion or I might be okay with it. But this is the one right here. I wish I would have waited to do the seeds until later because a lot of them fall right in the sentiment. And I, I think it's okay, like I said, but I would have preferred to probably mask off some of those. But again, telling you guys this for when you get your sets, your stenciling sets and stamp sets at home and are creating your own cards with that. Oh my gosh, I just love these. I think they're so fun. I mentioned this in another video uh, recently, but I know that we're starting to see a lot of fall and, and Halloween and Christmas type product come out. And as much as I love um, crafting and designing cards and projects with that stuff, it's been kind of nice that while we're still in the summer months to be designing summery themed cards. <laughs> uh, you know, these just kind of say summer to me with all the beautiful fruit. Okay, once we have our sentiments, and I am using Versafine Onyx Black Ink to stamp these, I am going to take all of my smaller sentiments from the Fruity Pun or fruit pun, and we are going to stamp those on another piece of Desert Storm cardstock using clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. And that is just to tie back to the craft cardstock. You could maybe do on black cardstock as well. I almost think that might have looked better too, but you know, I, I, I really do like how these turned out, so it's fine. I've really been on a not stamping and embossing on black kick lately. I don't know why. I love my craft card stock. It's a nice alternative to white. I like the, the base color of it. I like how it looks when you color with alcohol ink markers on it. I like how it looks when you stencil on it. So prep your card stock first with a powder tool. It's going to help keep your embossing powder right on the embossed areas so you don't get a bunch of those embossing powder flakes everywhere. And I'm just adding my ink. And then we will heat emboss. Off camera, I die cut all of my sentiments with the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies. You could also use a paper trimmer. I love the sentiment label dies. It really gives them a professional sentiment strip finish. The other option is you could stamp these smaller phrases in a black ink or even um, probably I wouldn't do the yellow. Um, but for the rest of the cards, you could stamp them in the coordinating color of ink that you used for the fruit. So maybe like reds. Uh, the brighter orange, the brighter greens, things like that, I think would look really awesome. I like to hit the back of the cardstock and the front with my heat tool. Kind of help minimize warping as much as possible. And then I did trim the top of the strawberry from craft or from the Desert Storm cardstock as well. And this is because everything else is inked on the Desert Storm. And I felt that if I inked blend or ink blended this, the top of the strawberry on white, um, it would have looked off. I could have chosen to do green as well. I think that would have been cute, but I had this obviously <laughs> craft card stock here that I used for my sentiments. So I went ahead and I die cut the top of my strawberry and I'm going to ink it up with the uh, Mode Lawn ink.
and then we can glue that down to our card and assemble everything. And I'm using a pretty heavy hand here, and it's a tiny bit longer than what we need, but that works so you can kind of center it the way you want and trim off the excess. I did spritz or add a little bit of water. I felt like I better have it coordinate um, with the rest of the card design. And now we have our sixth and final fruit finished. Using foam adhesive, I'm going to attach each of my sentiments to my cards. And once I have all of these adhered, it is time to embellish. For my embellishments today, I am going to be using an assortment of pearls and hearts. Each card will feature a white Trinity Stamps Tic Tac Jelly Heart uh, somewhere, I think underneath all of the greetings is where I chose to put it. The white is nice and vibrant and shows up. You guys know I love my heart embellishments. I haven't used them on a few cards lately and and you guys always point it out to me, which is so fun. I love that. Um, sometimes the card just doesn't lend itself to a heart, I don't think. And then I felt like because these are so simple, my go-to are the Pretty Pink Posh Pearls right now. You know, it's it's funny to look back. I used to do like a lot of sequins. Um, and then it was kind of more the gemstones. And the pearls are the new thing. <laughs> I say new, but I've been using these for a couple years. You guys have too. <laughs> um, but I love them. And I love them in all colors. So anything, I kind of try to do tone on tone. The orange has uh, creamsicle. The reds are all like red berry. We've got limeade for green, lemon for the lemon. Just matching them to each design. Just a little scattering on each. I love using the triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp to attach these or to pick these out so that it's easy to attach these. And again, just a simple little embellishment. The final thing for each card is going to be attaching each of these to a white top fold or side fold card base, whatever you prefer. I love um, how simple they are. I love that in basically, I believe about an hour and a half from start to finish, I did do these in one setting. I like to tell you guys if I know. you. Sometimes you ask and I have no idea because I've worked on a project over multiple days. I did sit down and do these completely from start to finish in one crafting session, and it only took me an hour and a half to do all of them from start to finish. That's awesome. You have six cards and you're ready to roll. So that is it, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of six oversized fruit cards featuring products from the Waffle Flower Crafts August 2023 release. Please be sure to visit my blog for a chance at a giveaway um, from Waffle Flower Crafts. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.